Greetings to you all and welcome back to Let's Play to Langriser Scenario Number 20, Strongest Knights in the Land. Now who could these strong knights be? Well, I haven't a clue. Hopefully this will explain everything to us. Not yet. There we go. Apparently the strongest knights in the land are these dark magician fellows called Egbert. Leon tagging along behind them all. But we did mention, previously, that there's only really three main enemies left. The Kaiser, Bernhardt, then we have the leader of the magicians, Egbert, and we have Leon, the head of the knights. That's basically all that's left. And according to this, and according to what I'm now seeing on the screen, there is Egbert, there is Leon. There's Laird! He's still alive! Go on, Laird. And there are just some other people who don't have names. They're not worthy of names. So, this level seems to put me against as many horsemen as I could possibly hope for. And looking at things, yes, those are royal lancers, so these are just lancers, normal horsemen that we saw on level 1. But realistically, we only started killing on level 2. But still, it's quite a way back. Oh, hello. Okay, some griffins, not that frightening angel equivalents, they'll be absolutely fine. And nothing else. Okay, things look good. So what do we want in this level? Well, we want Erwin right at the front. And he's obviously going to want as many phalanx as he can carry. Good man. A quick perusal through the equipment screen. What do we see? Trash. Great. Promptly abandon that plan, and we will instead go to Hain, who's going to have to, I suppose, get ballist. Ooh, to get griffins. Being the traitor that he is, he could hire himself some imperial griffins, but instead he's going to get ballistas. Stay true to the cause. Going to put Hain smack bang in the middle at the back. There's a reason for this. It's not a tactical one. It's symmetry. Ugh, Cherie. Ugh. But her good unit is Grenadier, which are going to get crushed by the horsemen. Which kind of leaves me... Yeah, let's do it. My planning for this one, for Cherie, who is going to have to go at the front, is just to give her a defensive unit and pray she doesn't die. That's a pretty solid plan. He's got the mobility covered. He's got his angels. He could have got some other units, but really, I mean, angels are amazing. Let's just keep using those. Strangely enough, Lester is going to be my other main attacking force, my other main general, because he's the only person who can also get phalanx. And Scott could get angels, but somebody has to deal with the enemy's grenadiers. You'll notice that if I forget a unit's name, I have to quickly go and find one on the map. It's great stuff. Just gonna be normal archers for Liana. She could get angels, but then again, she doesn't have the command radius to support angels, and I don't want her anywhere near the fight. So, just defensive archer types. That'll be absolutely fine. And you can see that symmetry coming nicely into play there. We've got our backsides flanked by priestesses. And an agent. Not sure I like the definition agent for a healer. That he is, that he is. He owns absolutely nothing to the Holy Blade, because he's defeated you without the Holy Blade, and certainly before it was powered up. So this is going to be it then, this will be Leon's final stand with his best mate Laird, always by his side. Leon, he's a bit braver than everyone else, he doesn't need his horses until everyone else is assembled. Even then, he's just going to stand at the front, that's absolutely fine. Here in the middle of this enormous road. Let's just let's just go over how wide this road is. Look at the size of a person. Remember that a person represents ten people. How wide is this road? 
But nevertheless, I suppose it's some kind of horse training ground, I don't know. It's the front of a castle, isn't it? Hmm. Well, it still doesn't seem to serve any purpose. He's hoping he says yes, ending the whole scenario. Ah, it's a shame. Looks like we're going to have to kill him. Not that much of a shocker, if I'm being completely honest. You don't want to fight him, but you will, because I'm going to order you to. You have no say in the matter, woman. Big shocker as Egbert teleports in, even though we saw him on the map screen before. Okay, very nice. That would be our friend Jessica, believed kidnapped by Egbert. It appears she failed in her mission to bring down all of the Empire by herself. A terrible plan, given that she helped us get the sword because she wanted us to do it for her. Leon being the Honourable Knight, he is throwing away his only advantage, dooming himself and all of his men. He's, he's firing discs at her, Tron style. That's the good old classic Tron, that's not this modern Tron. And Egbert's going to promptly leave the scene, so okay, maybe we won't be killing Egbert this time. Maybe it's just going to be the bravest knight in the land. Egbert, what did you do to this woman? On the plus side, it looks like we might have Jessica on our team. Big thumbs up and cheers all around for that one. As everybody knows, Jessica has proven herself to be quite possibly the most useful NPC in any game of all time. Let's hope she can keep up her stellar record. I don't know about you, but I'm growing tired of Leon's chat. Seems to be a lot of please stop, no I won't. Next person in the team, please stop, no I won't. Ah, so now I see. Leon, being the master tactician that he is, has realised that for the past 19 scenarios, they have tried to ambush us and it has failed. Because of that, Leon has worked out a plan. I shall ambush them before the fight starts. Clever man. I believe flanking us has also been tried, so he's worked out beyond this one. I'm going to ambush them from the same direction I'm attacking them. Before the fight starts. Man's a genius. You can see why he rose through the ranks. So, how are we going to deal with this one? We're going to blindly charge forward for a turn, as we always do. But not crazily far forward, or sure he's going to get absolutely destroyed. Cherie's the only person I fear for in this fight. I do recall a certain priestess girl having a fear of horses from an earlier scenario. So I'll have to keep her as far away from the action as I can. That's not her. There she is. She died quite horrifically because I, I left her exposed. Always a concern when you're fighting horsemen. Do not leave your fragile mage type commanders exposed for even a minute or they will get completely wrecked. Not so much by the Lancers, but certainly by the Royal Guards. Lester himself is actually quite mobile, out of water. Fortunately, we're not indoors, or he'd be a complete waste of space. Much like you, eh, Scott? Just going to get everyone into position, and then we're going to see what the computer wants to do. I'm assuming the computer will defend. But if the computer wants to blindly charge forward, that's their business. Not going to try any fancy holding down the B button in order to accelerate my screen scrolling, except for now. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Because I'll only end up cancelling my commands, as I've done many, many times before.
Even now, I don't trust the computer if I were to put everyone on defend to correctly surround my units. Well, my commanders. We have seen them fail when, really, there was only one option they could take and somehow they still refuse to take it. So, I'm going to very have to carefully move everyone up. Jessica not under my command. She has a green sword above her head. She will never be on my team, I fear. Not that I'm particularly disappointed that I don't have a... Ooh, an Archmage, level 7. I should not... That's not that bad. Interesting point, that Hain wants to train under her. Hain, of course, being four levels above her. Famous question we always find ourselves asking is... Do we want to summon something? Or do we want to move our healers forwards? For this fight, I think moving forwards is going to take a bit of priority, because the phalanx can pretty much kill everything. As always, first turn of any level has to be this famous move forwards turn. Should be the only one from here on out, should be action packed all the way. Doesn't do anything to help this turn, mind you. But hey, it's over. Good work. So over to the computer. Let's see what stunning tactics they have. Jessica, quiet you. Or, if you are going to help Jessica, summon up some units. J Jessica. I hate you. Why are we helping this damn woman? Ah, oh, whatever. Just kill Leon. Remember, the objectives for this level were to defeat all enemies, not just Leon. In the world of experience, which is where I live, that means that we can kill them in any order, it doesn't matter. Underestimated how far Leon could move, it seems. And he underestimated the defense merit of a Crusader, even though he has 57 attack. Which, by the way, is ridiculous. But, 57 attack is is a lot, but then again, being a horseman, he doesn't have much defense, and being a tactician, I have flanks, which mean he should soon meet his end. We'll soften him up with some spells and whatnot, but uh, he shouldn't be that hard to bring down, certainly nothing like he was earlier on when we were incredibly weak, and he was not as strong as he is now for no apparent reason. woman. The Archmages are probably my biggest concern in this entire fight, which is strange considering the whole premise for this fight is destroy the last of the Royal Knights. But Egbert's still kicking about, so his mages are still kicking about, that makes a bit of sense. Do we need to get off a heal? Because 4 HP phalanx aren't going to do much. Someone apparently died, not sure who that was. You're an inspiring leader, Laird. Inspiring. Scared to attack four pikemen, though. Now, my symmetrical tactics of having healers on both sides does mean that I should be able to spread my heals far and wide. Once again, the Lancers are absolutely no threat. The Knight Masters, which are commanding them, are a threat but uh, the units are nothing. All that matters are the Royal Guard units, which I believe are only commanded by Leon Laird and one random dude. So props to him. Not sure what he did to warrant the remainder of the good horsemen, but he's got them. Leon, the master tactician, the brave knight, full of honor. His, his tactics, attack! Just charge forwards, everyone run as fast as you can straight towards the enemy. Needs a lot to be desired, really. Lancers apparently stronger than Leon. We've heard my Crusaders were weakened. Crusaders can't hold off horsemen, which I was hoping they would, but then I remembered that the reason Crusaders have good defense score is because usually they're under control of Liana, not you, plus nine. Yeah. 
Archery's job then is going to be to attack the occasional group of units, or perhaps cast a spell, and pray she doesn't get killed. The chance of her getting killed is very high. Here we go, here's a good example of how she can get killed. She'll kill a lot of units before they reach her. Case in point, there we go. So, I'm pretty sure she'll survive this. It'd be incredible if she manages to miss seven. I do like how Shuri's attack is basically the same as Leon's, making her more powerful than the strongest person in the whole Imperial Army. Apart from the guy who's got the uh, Alhazar, but that's not really a fair fight. So we'll just choose to ignore him. Now the Archmages are nicely covered by all those horsemen, which means it's very difficult for us to actually kill them. Which means they're going to irritate us for the whole fight. I might see if I can toss enough spells at them to get them down to sort of seven hit points where they're healing instead of tossing meteors at me. But all that's going to be for another time. Lena has something to say. And if you want to see what Lena has to say, then join me next time. Hopefully, I'll see you then.